Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. My name's Jeff Ferris, welcome to my shop. Today, we're gonna take a closer look at Woodpecker's Pin Mill CI. Now, if you ever get into wood turning, one of the easiest ways to get started in the hobby and one of the most productive ways to enjoy the hobby is to make pins. Uh, they're just easy to do. Uh, there's very little wood involved. Uh, there's not any complicated turning involved and it's just a great way to make gifts. Uh, and one of the things that we need to do is the piece of wood has to be a very precise length. And I'm gonna show you how to get it just right. All right, let's get started. Now, uh, the way that you get that pin blank to the correct length is by working with a brass insert. The brass insert also gives some body to what's gonna turn out to be a very, very thin piece of wood or plastic. Now that brass insert gets glued into the blank, and you can see I've got all kinds of epoxy around the outside of the hole here from where I glued that uh, brass insert in. Well, we need to get rid of this extra epoxy, and we need to cut the material down just right to the length of that brass tube. And the pin mill CI is how we're gonna do it. Now most of the pin mills, uh, they're also called barrel trimmers, most of the barrel trimmers use a steel cutter uh, that's one piece. What we did with this design is we made this to use the same replaceable carbide inserts that we use on our ultra shear turning tools. Now those replaceable carbide inserts give us a much longer lasting edge and you can see that there are four edges to that cutter. So when this edge gets dull, all I have to do is loosen the set screw in the middle, turn it a quarter of a turn, tighten it back up, and go right back to work. So I can get four uses out of each one of these carbide inserts. Then we can just take it off and put on a new one. Now there are lots of different pin kits available, uh, hundreds in fact, and they all use a different size brass tube. And so we need a pilot to go inside that brass tube and at the same time that it is guiding our cutter to trim the end of the pin, we also want it to clean out any overflow glue that's down inside the tube. That's why we call it a pilot reamer. And we have those available in 12 different sizes. Now is that every one that you'll ever need? Probably not, but it's really, really close. There are very few pin kits out there that we don't have a reamer to fit. So one of the unique features of the Woodpecker's Pin Mill CI is the way that we attach the pilot reamer to the cutter. See that little flat right there on the shaft? We're gonna slide that in and you can see that the name engraved on the reamer lines up with that flat and I'm gonna turn that so that this set screw lines up with that as well. So it tightens down on the flat instead of on the round part of the shaft. That means that it stays secure and it doesn't spin and scar the shaft. The part that goes into the drill press is part of the head, not the shaft. Uh, in a lot of designs, the shaft is what goes in the drill bit and this is relying strictly on the set screw that tightens it down to keep it from spinning. Uh, with ours, the part that's doing the cutting is what is secured in the drill press. It's a much more secure design. So this is uh, set up with three flat sides because almost every drill chuck has three jaws and we're just gonna put one jaw on top of each one of those flats. Okay, so we're gonna start out with a pin blank of Brazilian rosewood, really, really tough stuff. Uh, and we've got quite a bit of overflow on our epoxy, gluing the, uh, the uh, insert in. So we need to trim that off. We're gonna trim from both ends, and we wanna trim just until we get down to the brass. So you always wanna do this in some type 
of a drill press vise, either a self-centering or one that you screw down, really doesn't matter as long as you're not trying to hold on to it by hand. With this one, you just put it in there, bring the clamp down, snap it in, you're good to go. So now we're gonna start the dust collector, add the drill press, and then we're gonna line up and bring the pilot down in, Now, you may have noticed in the camera that as we got down to the brass insert, all of a sudden we saw some real shiny shavings of brass. That tells you that you've gone just about as far as you want to go. You don't want to take very much off of the brass, but you do want to hit it. So if you get a few little tiny shavings, that's just exactly where you want to be. Now I'm going to turn it over, do the same thing on the other side. Perfect length, just exactly where we want it to be. Now I also want to show you how nice this cuts acrylics and other plastics, but the blank that I'm cutting in acrylic, the insert is smaller than the one that I cut in the rosewood. So we have to change our reamer. So we're going to take this out and we're going to undo the set screw. Slide that out. Take the reamer that we want to use and drop it in. And once again, if you forget to check on where the flat spot is, don't worry about it. Just line it up so that the engraving is in line with the set screw and lock it down. Now we'll pop that back in and we're ready for our next size. Once again, as soon as you see that brass flying, it's time to stop. Right to the brass and a beautiful polished cut on our acrylic. And that beautiful carbide tip is gonna give you that finish on hundreds and hundreds of pin blanks before you even have to turn it the first time. Hey folks, I hope you enjoyed the close-up look at Woodpecker's Pin Mill CI. It's a great way to get off on the right foot with your pin turning projects. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't yet, be sure and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. If you like the show today, give us the thumbs up. We'll see you next time on Deep Dive.